in. Greetings. Happy Monday. Welcome to the Steve Day Show here live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio and podcast. I am Steve Day. He's Todd Erzin. He's Aaron McIntyre. And we are brought to you by our friends over at First Cup Coffee Company, the Patriot-owned coffee company with a flavor for every freedom-loving American. But don't buy it for that reason. Get it because it's outstanding coffee. Just ask Aaron. He'll tell you. He loves it. If you want to try it today, get 10% off when you go to firstcup.com. Use the promo code DACE. And they put the roast date right there on every bag. So you'll see that it's shipped to you within days of being roasted. And if you subscribe, you'll get an extra 10% off as well for the life of your subscription at firstcup.com. Promo code DACE. Firstcup.com. Promo code DACE days. All right, coming up here at the bottom of the hour today, our good friend Bob Vanderplotz will join us. And it appears we, we may have caught our own side bearing false witness. And, you know, there's been this ongoing debate, you know, on the right, really since 2016, about how much like the left can we become and it can still be okay, right? Mm-hmm. And and of course, in typical Steve Day show fashion, we have staked out the absolutely most unpopular, least monetizable, possibly monetizable position on this issue. Correct. That's just kind of what we do. All right. If you're wondering kind of where we stand, start with what will be the hardest to monetize position. And that's typically not always. Not always. Sometimes a low lying fruit is correct. Right. OK. But typically we tend to be in the least monetizable possible position. Right. Correct. So that's where we're at on this part. All right. So we think because because really everybody wants to say we, we have to be uh, Eric Erickson and pretend it's too, it, that it we're, you know, the talking points of 2005, that kind of group, you know, uh, or then we can just completely just do whatever we want to win and debase ourselves accordingly for clicks. Uh, and and it's OK, because uh, our cause is so morally just that God will bless that when every word of the scripture says otherwise. Correct. And in Erickson's case, he's the guy who coined we, you will be made to care as you've pointed out a hundred times yeah. he's also given how many that. times over the years have people tried to credit me with yeah. that line and i've always said it's not my line it was his line and now he's like yes. eh, well, yeah whatever yeah, I mean, yeah now it is kind of like well maybe you won't be made to care after all right? i don't care yeah. <laughs> or i don't care yes all right so of course what's the least monetizable position not playing to either one of those fallacies but instead pointing out that we can not neither be nicer than god nor can we debase ourselves uh, either in pursuit of a righteous cause right yes and it appears this morning there is evidence that some people on our own side have have well lied and I want to discuss that. And, and does this violate the rules of engagement? Should we call this out? So we'll discuss that with Bob Vanderplatz coming up at the bottom of the hour. Next hour, it'll be your turn. Who knows what cornucopia of topics will get addressed as we have Ask Me Anything. And I realize it's been a long time since our followers over on MeWe have had a crack at this. So we're giving that to them today. Uh, and uh, they get to ask the questions this week. We'll get to those in the next hour. But before we get there, here is Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away brought to you by good news and bad news. Bad news for anybody thinking RFK Jr. was going to bring a reckoning to the health establishment. He apparently doesn't know what a human being is or what a woman is and said over the weekend he's fine if minors get mutilated in the name of gender. I mean, my, my position is that people should not be able to have access to those procedures that minors shouldn't without parental permission. And you know, I don't, I don't know enough about it, uh, Patrick, to, to say that it should be completely illegal. For Under 18? No, no. But, yeah, I just don't know enough. But not so fast. The outlet that actually circulated that video over the weekend is MAGA War Room. Those comments were actually from about six months ago and are totally contrary to what RFK Jr. has on his position on this issue on his website right now. Good news for Christy Noam. We're no longer talking about how she threw her dog into a gravel pit and shot it. Bad news for Christy Noam. We're now talking about this. You write about lessons learned in leadership um, and you bring up some specific incidents I want to ask you about. You talk about meeting some world leaders and one specific one. Quote, I remember when I met with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, I'm sure he underestimated me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. I've been a children's pastor, after all. Did you meet Kim Jong-un? 
Well, you know, as soon as this was brought to my attention, um, I certainly uh, made some changes and looked at uh, this this passage. And I've met with many, many world leaders. Uh, I've traveled around the world. Uh, as soon as it was brought to my attention, uh, we went forward and have made some edits. So I'm glad that this book is being released in a couple of days and that those edits will be in place and that people will, will have the updated version. Good news for Christy Noam. That's not the most... Re- thing on the montage today because Harvard University exists. Looking at my nose, but my knowledge ain't beaten. Space repetition, give me something to believe in. Pass all my tests, but I just give them the reading. In the food chain, we're the ones that eat it. Harvard Med, ain't no bottom feeder. MD stands for my demeanor. Ask permission before I ever greet you. Does it radiate? Does it come with strain? Scale one to ten, can you rate the pain? When I knock the door, you ask who is it? You can check my coat, it'll spell my name. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you're messing with some Harvard MDs. Found my best friends for life from this Harvard MD. Giving everything we got for this Harvard MD. Now from the top, make it drop, come get your Harvard MD. You got your offer, now say yes to this Harvard MD. We're talking doc, 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 that's a Harvard MD. You deserve the spot you got, future Harvard MD. There's some docs in this house. (laughs) There's some docs in this house. There's some docs in this house. There's some. Learning Chinese today. Today's phrase is that video gave me turbo cancer. Bad news for those medical students at Harvard. I trust the people you're about to hear from before them. Here's independent journalist Nick Shirley on the streets of New York City interviewing young pro Hamas orcs about what it is exactly they're protesting. What are you guys out here protesting for? No comment. Why are you guys out here today? Speak to the organizers. Why can't I? I wanted to ask you. Official statements from the organizers only. In the simplest terms, why are you guys protesting? Why are you guys protesting today? I'm okay, thank you. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it would be a good idea if we... Why are you guys protesting? Just to be a part of the cause. And what's the cause? I'm not the right person to talk to either. It's not our job to talk. We're just here to support. We're not the spokespeople of this event. This is the wrong people to talk to. By the way, across the country at one of those encampments at UCLA, one of the arrested protesters allegedly caught the eye of Chinese Americans with at least one account on Twitter identifying her as a graduate of the Chinese People's University. Obviously, that's weird, and several people have connected the short dots that this individual is likely a Chinese spy. Chinese spies at pro-Hamas protests in American universities. What could go wrong. Good news for the White House. Who needs pro-Hamas works when you've got Luke Skywalker? Well, you know, I called him Mr. President. He said, you can call me Joe. And I said, can I call you Joe B. Wan Kenobi? Bad news for the White House because the cringe was just beginning. Here's Jared Bernstein, whose academic education consists of degrees in music and social work. He's also the chair of the Council of Economic Advisors to Joe Biden. Here he is on a new documentary talking about the country's monetary system. Like you said, they print the dollar. So why why does the government even borrow? Well, um, the uh, so the I mean, again, some of this stuff gets some of the language that the MM, some of the language and concepts are just confusing. I mean, the government definitely prints money, and it definitely lends that money, which is why uh, the government definitely prints money, and then it lends that money by uh, by selling bonds. Uh, is that what they do? They, they, um, they, yeah, they, they, um, they sell bonds. Yeah, they sell bonds, right? Because they sell bonds and people buy the bonds and lend them the money. Yeah. So, a lot of times, a lot of times, at least to my ear, with, with MMT, the the language and the concepts can be kind of unnecessarily confusing. But there is no question that the government prints money, and then it uses that money to. Um, uh, 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 so, um, yeah, I, I guess I'm just, I don't, I can't really talk. I, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what they're talking about. Like, cause it's like the government clearly prints money. It does it all the time and it clearly borrows. Otherwise we wouldn't be having this debt and deficit conversation. So I don't think there's anything confusing there. And finally, good news, period. Here's Alice Cooper. Yes, that Alice Cooper with a bigger dose of truth than 90% of American churches heard yesterday. Tell them who Jesus Christ is to you. Well, I mean, everything. I mean, you, you, you know, we're, we're not here without him. Most people I know, young people, think Jesus Christ is a swear word. Yeah. You know, even at, even at Solid Rock, you know, where we have the teenagers down there, right. they have no idea 
that who Jesus Christ is. Yeah. He's not preached enough. Yeah. You know, most written about character of all time yes. in history. Right. And yet people go out of their way to not believe in it. Why do you think that is? I think it's because they don't want to give up their godship. They believe the Hollywood version of, oh, I do more good than bad, that kind of thing. And I go, why is that? And Satan's got you right where he wants you. Yeah. You know, to believe that. Yeah. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That's no right. one comes to the Father but by me. Right. Those are the truest words ever spoken. Yeah. And that's what happened while we were away. Those two videos are back to back from Alice Cooper and Jared Bernstein are incredible. Aaron's correct. I, I would go even further. That that is a from Alice Cooper and that video goes even on even longer. That that's a clearer presentation of the gospel than you will hear in ninety percent of American youth groups at any point in time. Period. The Jared Bernstein video, uh, the Biden economic advisor, is stunning in like a Obleep, pathetic, and I knew it all along kind of way. Trust the experts. Is that what they do? Trust the experts. Brought to you by our friends over at Fume. Have you ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you were climbing Everest in flip-flops when you did? Well, here's a breath of fresh air. It's called Fume. F-U-M as in Mary. It's not about giving up. It's about switching up. Fume takes your habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a whole lot more enjoyable with an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. And instead of vapor, you'll get flavored air. Instead of electronics, it's completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors as well. So Fume is good. Your bad habit, bad. So this is the habit you're free to enjoy and makes uh, replacing your bad habit easier. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing and anxiety while breaking your habit. Uh, so start the year off right. Maybe you tried and you're like, I'm off the wagon. Well, start the mid-year off right. All right. Uh, the good habit to start it off right here uh, or restart it again by going to tryfume.com. Uh, try fume, F-U-M. Tryfume.com slash Steve. Get the journey pack today. Fume is giving you 10% off if you use my code Steve to help get you started. Uh, that's the good habit. That much easier. Uh, again, tryfume.com slash Steve. 10% off when you use the code Steve at tryfume.com slash Steve. To Aaron's montage, we go and... I don't really have a lot to say about this. What's happening with Christy Nome is pretty self-evident. First of all, that video of her, that just, that just even looked like the same person. I mean, I just, I, I mean, the amount of work done there is uncomfortable, frankly. And um, I, it, this is just done an individual very comfortable in their own skin. Very clear. Uh, just the Commander McBrag, yeah, I shook hands. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm Forrest Gump. Just casually ran into Kim Jong Un. Um, I, I, I mean, it's one of the most immediate, stunning implosions I've ever seen. But I, I think it's a reminder too, though, that politics is a vocation, like any other job, and in and in any other industry, there are people that are just mid, or they're they're just good enough to be local, and. You know, you think about it in football, you think of like, you know, Norv Turner. How many teams, at playoff teams, has he coordinated the offense for? How many Super Bowl rings, right? Tons. Mm -hmm. But every time he's been tried as a head coach a couple times, it's just not, that's just not who he is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and th did I say Norv Turner's a terrible person? No. Did I say he's a bad coach of football? No. No. He's just, he's just not an alpha. He's just not the guy that sits at the head of the table. That's just not where he's best and the teams that he's on are best when he's not sitting in that chair, but maybe the chair one or two away from that position, right? Mm -hmm. In our line of work, there are some people that are good enough to be on a local market. Some people that are good enough to be in a major market. Some people that are good enough to be national. Okay. And then there are people that aren't that good. And then they just get, they, but they're there because people are paying them to say things on their behalf, but that's not important now. Back to the point about Christy. No, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? Anyway, um, it, it's very clear that she's great for Rapid City and Aberdeen. But I know she's just, 
she has no can't can't be a national standard bearer i mean she just can't stick to a message way outside of herself um not comfortable in her own skin patently dishonest uh craven ambition it's embarrassing it's called trying too hard it's desperate and we're just it just you know stick to south dakota kid have a nice life okay i just uh, can before we move on can i show you this sure i just saw what is probably my favorite christy noah meme that lauren lucas just sent me you want you ready for this this did not end the way i thought it was going to for those of you listening it's a picture of forrest gump (laughs) sitting on a bench gosh with the words, Christy Noem is like a box of chocolates. She'll kill your dog. Oh, my gosh. Gosh. Oh, man. It's, it's, just, it's just embarrassing. And she's just not a, a major political talent. That's all. Yeah. She's, I'm sure she's a, a great queen of the prom for Rapid City High School, but she's just not a major political talent. And moving on. Let's talk about something that matters and is way more serious. The infiltration of Islamofascism into the culture, which is just picking up converts called, well, they, they're more like simps. That's what's in Aaron, the videos that Aaron showed, right? I don't know why I'm here. I'm here for the cause. You know, I don't talk. I'm, I'm, I'm here to express solidarity and, and understand most of these people would also probably show up at every rainbow jihad protest, every abortion protest. And after they're done with us, all the Islamists they're cheering now will all slit their throats. That we're literally the only thing standing between them and their throats not getting slit are us, literally. If it weren't for people like us, their throats would have already been slit by the very Islamists that they don't uh, understand the cause and they're there to simp for just because viva la revolution, right? Okay. But but I want to make sure that we understand what we are dealing with. Because I, I think, you know, I saw this stat from our, our friend and colleague, Daniel Horowitz, right before we went on the air. That by some estimates, the Muslim population in the U.S. has increased by 62% just since 2011. And I want to explain to you why that is a problem. And I want to thank Media Matters in advance because they're going to help me get the word out about this segment that I'm about to, to do for the next 10 minutes. I'm confident that they will be promoting this for us, and it might even make the weekend newsletter. All right, so I wanted to make sure to get... Is it Abigail? I always forget this broad's name. What's her name? Uh, Ethel. Ethel. Did you just make that up? I make it up every time you <laughs> ask that, that question. <laughs> every single time. <laughs> Barb. And it's just, it, you've been Steph. asking this for four months, five months, six <laughs> months. Every time I make up a new, a new name. And I try to make it like a name from the 1920s, too. <laughs> That's great. He's not the best color man in the game for nothing, is he, folks? <laughs> I was trying to be serious, but then I walked right in. I stepped on that rake. All right. Let me be serious for a second why this is an issue. You've probably been taught that jihad means holy war. That's probably what you've been taught. Except it's incorrect. Well, that's not fair. It's not incorrect. It's insufficient. Like, you've probably been told that Jesus' last words at the cross in English are, it is finished. That's not incorrect. It's just maybe not sufficiently precise. A more precise understanding of what he says at the cross at the end in his last words are, it is accomplished. Now, accomplished and finished, is that a distinction without a difference? It depends on what the objective being referred to is. Okay, because if you read it is finished, you could just say, okay, he's done. He died. He breathed his last breath and the sacrifice is over. That's true. Right. That, that's not mm-hmm. incorrect. That's true. Right. Yep. But it's not sufficient. Why is he on the cross? What is he dying for? So it is accomplished now. If you go to the more precise translation, it, it makes you ask, what was just accomplished by, this, by the murder of this man? What was accomplished? You know what, you know what I'm yeah. saying? What's accomplished is the wrath of God is satisfied. There, 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 needs to, there, there, there needs to be no more sacrifices now. The lamb slain before the foundation of the world has given his life. 
the wrath of God as revealed through his law and our transgressions against it has been satisfied. That wrath is accomplished. And so saying it is finished isn't incorrect, but it, saying it is accomplished brings a lot more context and heft to it, right? Yes. Similar here. To say jihad means holy war isn't incorrect. It's insufficient and, and, and imprecise. It is, but it's way more than that. What jihad actually means in a literal translation is inner struggle. Inner struggle. Quran means recite. Islam means submission. Jihad means inner struggle. What inner struggle? The inner struggle that every Muslim contends with, just like, you know, what you're going to find is the Quran takes every biblical narrative from Genesis to Revelation and bastardizes it the whole way through. The whole way through. Okay, so what I'm about to explain to you is the Islamic version of a great commission. And, and jihad is similar to the, the Christian battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. But the Christian battles this to become more Christ-like. The Muslim battles this to bring more dominion under Allah. So the inner struggle is the temptation to not confront, the temptation to not fulfill, the temptation to not penetrate, infiltrate. When that is the calling of every Muslim is to spread the dominion of Islam, the will of Allah. So jihad is the inner struggle that every Muslim must take on to advance the dominion of Allah and Islam. Every Muslim is called the jihad. It does not have to specifically be violent. In fact, there are many orthodox sects of Islam that don't think it should be. But there are several others that do. Going back to the head man himself, Muhammad. He spent the last 20 years of his life fighting perpetual warfare. And, and therefore, that struggle to bring the world under the dominion of, of Allah is holy. And therefore, yes, it means holy war. But if you just if you translate it one to one like that, you'll think that the only people conducting jihad are just the crazies. No, they're not. What you're witnessing in these protests is jihad. And it's succeeding. Look at the college students just showing up as complete simps, not even understanding truly, fully what it is that they are consenting to and simping for. This is important to understand. Every sincere Muslim is called to this. Everyone. The only disagreement is over the methodology. So when you see someone like Elon Omar, for example, infiltrating the government, we're going to uh, have a Somali rally in my U.S. congressional district. That's all jihad. This is her carrying out the inner struggle that she has call, is called to as a Muslim to advance the dominion of Islam. Islam divides the world into two kingdoms. The kingdom of Islam and the kingdom of Kufar, or infidels, unbelievers. Again, you will see numerous parallels. Muhammad's a plagiarist. You will see numerous bastardized parallels to the biblical narrative here. Muhammad even claimed it was the angel Gabriel that gave him the Quran that told him recite, which means Quran. In a cave, you know, like the angel Gabriel came to Mary and said, behold, you will be with child. The whole thing is 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 a, is a plagiaristic act. By the way, can you think of a realm that takes God's word and twists it? No, I can't think of anything, guys. I'm, 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 I'm drawing blanks. Never mind. Forget that part. So what this essentially means, what Daniel stat means is this. We have, by some estimates, increased the population of people 
who are commanded by their scriptures to turn us into Muslims by 62%. That's what it means. Flat out, that's what it means. Now, the challenge for me as a Christian is I'm to love my neighbor as I love myself, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm to be kind to the alien and sojourner in the land, right? Sure. Such as once were some of us, right? Okay. Yes. So I don't think necessarily as a Christian I can just automatically, nor should I, just automatically reject people because of their because they're they're Muslims on the on the on. But I should at least be aware of what it is I'm bringing in, right? Yes. I should at least be aware of what it is I might be fostering, right? Yes. Yeah. And this, so, so you should be aware of this. Have you seen the latest results? Uh, who, who runs the Labour Party in England? Have you seen who the mayor of London is? All, basically all Muslims. That's on purpose. Maybe you think an Islamic worldview is superior to a biblical worldview. Maybe you think Sharia law is superior to the laws of nature and nature's God. You are welcome to that opinion. You can have it, right? But let's just be honest about that then. That's what we're doing here. This is a cultural hijacking. This is a form of invasion by another means. And you should know this. Finally, can you guys think of a, another movement launched with the phrase inner or my struggle that also had one of its hallmarks be blame the Jews. Can you guys think of a, another movement? With, yeah, again, I'm drawing a blank again. Can't believe this is what happens. You get, you get post 50, right? You just start forgetting things. I, I, I thought it came to me and then I realized, no, I just totally made that up. No parallel there at all. Gentlemen, your thoughts. You know, there was, um, I believe it was one of the California campuses, whether it was UCLA, maybe it was Stanford that had one of these pro Hamas orc encampments uh, last week. And somebody drew a swastika and the president of the university said uh, this was obviously done to just further, uh, it, it, you know, um, just make people upset, further, uh, further encourage them to um, to act out. This has no place here. Again, it was a swastika drawn at a pro-Hamas or encampment rally, what have you. And I thought, boy, that's terrible. Wait till they hear about what the Nazis did. Um, because obviously the, the subtext there is that that's always, you know, anti-Semitism is always just, just aligned with the, the aforementioned people group that you just mentioned. I'm sorry, didn't mention, couldn't, come, couldn't ring a bell. Because it's not, it, they, they don't exist. Don't, don't exist. Yeah. yeah. Can it be a hijacking if nobody cares? Use that word. I, you know, we have our doctors at Harvard going. Uh, you mean if they like try to hijack going, the plane and the people on the plane go and kill the pilots for them and say, hey, you take over, then it's not a hijacking. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. The, I, the so-called uh, expert at economics that you talked about. I, this is this is why it's the least important election of our lifetime. Not because we couldn't use a good federal government. It's because... Right now, under the status quo, we are incapable and or totally disinterested in fighting back against this hijacking. That's the simple truth of the matter. They, we have laugh tracks still to what's going on there. They're winning. People like that. Look at how easily they say, well, it's not my, it's not my job to speak now. They're falling into line. It's I'm I'm taking my orders. Talk to the people uh, who who told me what to do. The elites are doing the same thing. That economist, those doctors, all of them. We have no shot at defeating this right now. The L is there. We have to start by wanting to defeat it. Yeah, we well, I actually, to. take a step back. You have to stop by start by even understanding what it is, and then deciding whether or not you want to defeat it or not. All right, we'll come back more in a moment. As Mother's Day approaches, let's highlight an organization that cares for moms, and that's Preborn. 
Their networks of clinics offer life, love, and support to pregnant women feeling scared and alone, so they are contemplating the murder of their children, pressured to make that choice, one that will not just sacrifice the life of their baby, uh, but also uh, part of their own heart and soul as well. But when, it's, when a distressed mother comes to preborn, she's welcome with open arms. She's offered a free ultrasound to see and hear the precious life inside of her. Now, don't take the, the merciful methodology uh, too far because they're going to show her that ultrasound to confront her. I know that we think confrontation always requires a tone. It, it, confrontation isn't a tone any more than nice is a tone. Those are fallacies. Okay. Uh, this is confrontational. Because she's going to have to now, now that she's heard that heartbeat, her conscience no longer can come up with all of the excuses for why she was thinking of killing her child. She has to now say, I'm going to kill my kid. And that confrontation is necessary for the conscience to be, her God-given conscience to be activated. But here's the thing Preborn also understands too. Uh, it, is, it is typically not women in a, in a good place in life that are thinking of murdering their children, but women who aren't. Women like my own mom, 14 and pregnant. So they also understand that it's great that she chooses life, but it's not like that's an easy life being a single mom in many cases. So they're there both uh, prenatal, postnatal for the mom as well. Everything from even car seats to counseling. All of this, by the way, is free of charge, provided they have tax deductible donations from people like us. If you'd like to make one today, you know, one ultrasound is only 28 bucks. Where else can you think to yourself, I've got pretty good odds I could save a life for just $28. Hmm. Not too many places. Here's one. Go to preborn.com slash Steve and make a donation today. Preborn.com slash Steve. Or uh, that's pound 250 on your mobile phone and the keyword baby. Or preborn.com slash Steve. Let's welcome in our good friend Bob Vanderplatz. Good to see you, brother. How are you? Doing really well. Good to be here. Good to be here with you. And... You know, I want to make sure I, every now and then I, I think it's required that we have to play referee with our own side. Right. Of course we do. I, I, you and I were, went to NRB many years ago together and uh, the featured speaker was um, Tony Evans, Dr. Tony Evans now. Yeah. Yeah. And we were just blown away by his keynote address. Do you remember what it was about? It was all about playing for an audience of one or refereeing for an audience of one, yep. not for the fans in the stands. That the church's role in a culture war should be, first and foremost, to be referee. Yep. That we shouldn't reduce ourselves to mere activists as if there are equal um, claims of truth here. Mm -hmm. and, and understand, Dr. Evans' presentation was not meant to call us to evacuate from the culture. It was the opposite, actually. He says, hey, by just reducing yourself to nothing but an activist, as if you, the other, you, you, both sides have equal arguments of merit to consider here, you're actually diminishing the gospel. Mm -hmm. The role of the church is to be the referee. We hold the keys to the kingdom. We Amen. have the truth. We have the word of God. We have revelation, okay? And anything outside of it is a foul or a penalty. That, so he was actually calling us to, to actually something higher than just, hey, I'm just activist for a political party. <laughs> And since that time at NRB, which I thought his message was outstanding, uh, Tony and I become very good friends. He loves the Daniel Impact, the Church Ambassador Network of the Family Leader. But after all that, he wrote a book called Kingdom yeah, Politics. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, we spent the bulk of last year hmm. for Theology Thursday. We did that entire book. It's and a that, great and that was book. that was most of Theology Thursday yeah. in 2023 yeah. on this show. Looking through looking through a kingdom lens where the God of, or the the Word of God is the plumb line. That's where you referee from. You know, what's your rule book? We need to know the rule book if we're going to play referee in a culture. So I, this is all a setup to where we're going next. Okay, I'm not not to set you up. <laughs> <Okay>. Not <laughs> that I'm not I that I'm a, not that I'm beneath that because yeah. I've done it many times over the years. <laughs> but this is not one of those times. Okay, uh, but. Because I, I, you know, there's there's this argument right now, that, and it's been going on for many years on the right about tactics. All right, and I think, frankly, much of the argument, like I think a lot of arguments, frankly, are false choices. Mm -hmm. And one is we have to be nicer than God. 
and just bend over backwards and become syncretist, which is a nice word for heretic, mm -hmm. right? Um, the other is that we can just do whatever we want, have no standard at all, tell any lie we want, uh, debase ourselves as much as we want, and because what we're up against is so unholy that God will uh, will bless our unholiness yeah. and say, "Hey, thank you for your cunning." I, I think and that's whoever not screams the loudest wins. Yeah, I don't, I don't think any of either one of those things are true. Right. Okay. So, with that said, I want to show you a clip. I woke up to this this morning. And it, and it was tweeted in, I, I, by many accounts that I respect, which, which I don't blame the accounts for this. I think it goes to show how successful the misinformation operation was here. All right. Watch this clip. This, is, this was in Aaron's montage, too. Watch. What will you do as a president to get this nonsense out to prevent kids under the age of 18 with or without the consent of the father to transition. You may even say that is an okay policy you're a part of that many families disagree with. One, what's your position on this and what will you do as a president? I mean, my, my position is that people should not be able to have access to those procedures that minors shouldn't without parental permission. And, you know, I don't, I don't know enough about it. Uh, Patrick, to to say that it should be completely illegal for under all. eighteen? No, no. Yeah, I just don't know enough. What I what I'm going to tell you. All right, so I saw this clip. Now, I, I just think this is morally disqualifying. It is. I, okay, I, and, and so I tweeted this when I saw it right away, mm -hmm. okay? And, and, and after I hit post, though, you know, something jarred my memory, and it was like, well, wait a minute. I've seen him asked about this in the last couple of months, and this was not his answer. So when was this one? Well, just, we're going to get to that. Okay. Okay. So I jumped over on his website and looked at his issues page. I think that's usually the most up-to-date thing of where a candidate stands on issues. Mm -hmm. Not always, but usually. And sure enough, um, it says right on there uh, that uh, there's no way these surgeries should be legal for minors with or without parental consent. No way minors should be subjected to these surgeries. Okay. So then, you know, I start doing some investigating and some other things. This clip and Aaron, you found the actual date, correct? Yeah, it was early December of 2023. So this this clip is six months old, which in a campaign is an eternity. OK, yeah. this clip is six months old. This clip was 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 uh, posted last night and then went everywhere on righty Twitter by MAGA War Room. MAGA War Room is the official Twitter account of Make America Great Again, Inc. So this is an instrument of the Trump campaign. Sure. So one of two things are possible. That A, they themselves did not know the date of the clip. And hey, I didn't know either. You know, you, that can be an honest mistake. But, you know, I'm looking through their feed right now. And... I, I don't see anything that indicates any form of we're apologetic for this. By the way, the, most of their feed right now is, do you know who Bobby Kennedy is? Because there was a Quinnipiac poll last week that showed he's taking many more votes from Trump than Biden. Hmm. But, but, um, but Quinnipiac is literally like the worst public pollster not called sure. CNN in America. But nevertheless, yep. there's nothing from, the, from this exact feed correcting this. So therefore, since it's not corrected at this point, and I've actually seen now it's being community noted. So it's not like they don't know that this clip is six months old and is now it's perfectly fair. If they if they had ran the ad that said, which Bobby, do you really know Bobby Kennedy? Is it, is, the, is it the Bobby Kennedy who on his website says to ban these surgeries or the Bobby Kennedy who said six months ago this? That's fair game. Sure. I did is. that with Mitt Romney on virtually every issue. The you first bet. presidential campaign you and I were a part of together. Right. Yep. That's a fair thing. Force him to can, can to reconcile his position. But that's not what they did here. All right. To me, this feels like the bearing of false witness. Okay, mm. and and I think that if that, and maybe you disagree, but that's what I wanted to bring a third, a, a second opinion here. I think this bear, this is this it violates a, an actual commandment, and is dishonest. And what I also don't like about it, though, is is this is again where the Trump wing at times gaslights its own base. OK, gaslights its own people to get a message across. And that's a very King Saul-esque uh, instinct. And I kind of abhor it. What do you think? Well, let me tell you where we go back to. First of all, as I tell politicians all the time, I told Nikki Haley this in my office. It's one thing to be wrong. It's another thing to stay wrong. 
So if you were wrong six months ago, but now you corrected it and you're saying, you know what, these surgeries have no place anywhere. I mean, he doesn't want kids to get vaccinated either, right? Mm -hmm. Why would you let him have a surgery? So these kids, so it's one thing to be wrong, but then don't stay wrong. So if he corrects it, great, you should cheer him on for that. For the Trump campaign, to give them a little bit of credit here, it'd be a thing of, you know, as long as Bobby Kennedy's not a threat, we're not researching a whole lot about what he said to anybody at any time. They were promoting him yeah. six months ago, yeah. actually. Once he starts becoming a threat, I start digging up everything. I'll say, you find this thing from six months ago, and you go, uh, I think everybody in our base needs to see this thing. But you're right, Steve. If it's on his website, and if it's now, you, know, you can't bear false witness against the guy either. Call him out by saying, which one, where are you at today? Six months ago, you were here. Today, you're here. Where are you at today? The problem is that too often we hear in politics, Everything's fair. We only give you a partial clip. We don't give you the full story. Um, never have, never will. But I think if you're going to raise your candidate to a higher standard, raise the country to a higher standard, you got to be truthful with the audience as well. Am I? Do you think I'm making too much out of this? It's really not that big of a deal. No, I don't. Matter of fact, I think it's a conversation that the country's having, and I think it's a good thing if if Kennedy goes from, I don't know a whole lot about it, not sure exactly what I would do to say absolutely not. I think that's a good piece of the conversation. Um, and no, I, think I, no the, I mean the technicality of the way this information came about from the Trump campaign as being false. So yeah, just, you know, is, my, is that going too far? Do you, my my bar far? is so low today uh, in regards to, I mean, take a look at the ads that I run against Ron DeSantis. I mean, they were clips and you don't hear the rest of the ad, mm -hmm. right? Because he actually was right on the issue, on drilling in the Everglades and stuff like that. But you only got a partial piece of it. Uh, the whole idea about land ownership in China, you only got a partial a partial piece of it. So it seems to be in politics that you can do that all day long. The problem is, I think it's way more fair for the Trump campaign to call him out, basically, so what else is he flip flopping? Yeah, I mean, this guy's. I mean, if, if they want to well, say, if they want to say the guy was a lifelong liberal, sure, until until twenty twenty one, basically, and has adopted, which is true, yeah, and has adopted all of these now somewhat, you know, centrist mainstream positions, just as he's gearing up to run for president. Also true. You okay. Bet. If they wanted to do that, I don't have a problem with that at all. What, 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 and, and I think it's a worthwhile thing. I mean, I flirted with Bobby Kennedy until he, he literally uh, named a druid his running mate. Sure. Okay. And, and why does that matter to me? Because he has no political record. And he's off on the life issue. Okay. It, well, that too. Um, but he's, he's given five different positions sure. on that too. But his current position is, yeah, yeah. you can have an abortion whenever you want, basically. Yeah. So um, you but, go back to the Trump campaign, though, 2016, which your audience will really remember as well, is that it was in the fall, October, is when the Billy Bush tapes were released. Mm -hmm. One of my thoughts, because obviously I was very involved in the Coxes in the primary with Ted Cruz, I was like, where was those that tape back then? So all of us had full disclosure when we're making a choice for president. I'm sure they just discovered it in October of and 2016. No, no. So yeah. we so we know that happens of people discovering things later on. The fact is, though, I think there's a better way to approach Kennedy that still benefits Trump without being we're going to give you six month old information without giving you the up to date information. This is I, you guys vote however you want. I told you last week I'm I'm out of the this is such an important sure. election messaging business. I told the audience this last week. I, I'm just the, the thing has just become beyond silly, and just you know you follow your own conscience. We're pretty much on our own politically anyway. My concern of of raising this point though, is is I am, I'm I'm I am deeply opposed to setting a precedent that it's okay to gaslight our own people, okay? Rahab gets, gets um, put into the lineage of the Messiah by gaslighting the people trying to kill the good guys, mm -hmm. by gaslighting the bad guys. Yep. Not by gaslighting the good guys, okay? So th that's my concern, is, is, is we are allowing, we saw this during the primary at times, and we're seeing it now. We are we are we are saying that there's a new thing now that it's OK to lie to our own people. And 
long after this election cycle ends and Joe and and Joe Biden charts himself again and and Donald Trump's tried for 75 more felonies that no one understands all over again all the and and 80 year old men die and de- decompose in graves long after this cycle ends okay and proves to us that it really wasn't the most important election and I was wrong okay and I should have listened to myself all the years where I hated that saying okay long after that all occurs the precedent of it's okay to lie to our own people, to gaslight our own people, just I'll give you the last word. I am, I am concerned that it has destructive consequences that will long outlast the, the current players in the game if we permit this. Well, of course it's going to have destructive consequences because, you know, you go back to the basic thou shalt not lie. And what you're really calling on is that we need to have a higher standard here. Mm -hmm. The reason so much of the country is turned off of politics and politicians is stuff like this. You know, you tell us a half truth, tell us a partial truth. What can I believe? What can I believe? Therefore, I'm just going to turn away from it. So I think the higher standard is, you know, raise yourself to a higher standard of honesty and integrity. And in this case, it would have been easy to say, you know, Bobby Kennedy, thank you for coming our way. I've been been there the entire time. Well, that's the thing. How do you think Trump would answer that? That's if, a, Trump that, were, that, if Trump were asked, should we ban these surgeries for minors? What do you think I, he would I say? I really hope and believe that he would say we should ban the surgery for minors. I'm not so sure he'd follow up by saying, of course it's wrong. You were born a male or you were born a female. You're going to die a male. You're going to die a female. You should embrace your gender. That's who God created you to be. We need a champion for gender just as much as we need a champion for life today. Gentlemen, we got about a minute. Any thoughts on the conversation Bob and I just had real quick? Back in the middle of March, you'll remember the bloodbath comments from Donald Trump. He was giving some speech and he warned about how U.S. automakers are going to face a bloodbath if he's not elected because of Biden's disastrous trade policies and policies on on green stuff and things like that. And it was not one of those times where Trump just kind of stepped on a rake and misphrased something. It was obvious he was talking about an economic bloodbath for automakers. And the media took that and just completely lied about it. Headline from NBC, Trump says there will be a bloodbath if he loses the election. Right. New York Times, Trump says migrants, uh, not people. And he was calling for violence. Yeah. Tell me, though, why are we supposed to go to the mattresses to defend him from an obvious unfair bushwhacking when we can't be bothered on this type of issue with RFK Jr. to get some parenthetical information. As you just articulated a few moments ago, there was a way to do this. Hey, which Bobby Kennedy are you actually voting for? Do you know here all of the promises that he makes? Does he do you even promise him to do you even believe him Mm -hmm. uh, or trust him to follow through on those where he's changing his uh, beliefs on what a man is or what a woman is in six months time? There are uh, other ways to go about this. Why do we have to go to the gaslighting? That's That's the the frustrating part about this era it doesn't even have to be he could have done the same thing without breaking a commandment so why break a commandment then if you don't have to because we don't care if he does red wave happened in 2022 we had a chance to say we don't like to get gaslit that happened iowa evangelicals two to one margin for him we like it hour two is next All right, back here with Hour 2, live and on demand on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. I'm Steve Dace. He's Aaron McIntyre. He's Todd Erzin. And you are you, and you can let us know what you think about what we think by emailing the show, steve at stevedace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. Like us on Facebook, me, we, and Gab. Follow me at Steve Dace Show on Twitter, Getter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also find me via podcast, and a lot of you have. A lot of you have. So if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, leave us a five-star review there on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, also hit subscribe, or if you're tuning in on iTunes, that's follow. And these, and, and that way, every single time we do one of these new episodes, it will show up in your feed every single time. And we want to thank each and every one of you that has done one of those things for us already. Also want to thank our friends over at Relief Factor. Uh, you know, remember back in the day when you could do all the normal things you wanted to in a day without feeling that achiness soreness and stiffness that just lingers and won't go away and you've probably thought there's nothing i'll be able to do about it i'm just gonna have to live with this you may i mean there's i i don't have a hundred percent cure for you but i got a 70 percent option of relief 
from our friends at Relief Factor. It's the drug-free supplement created by physicians who can prescribe drugs because they were concerned that the drugs were just masking the pain but not dealing with the inflammation causing it and at times may have side effects as well. So what if we could go after drug-free, the original cause of your pain in the first place? That'd be great. Again, no guarantees here, but folks over the years, over 1 million people have tried Relief Factor. 70% of them had such great great results in three weeks or less that they stuck with the with the product long term. So if you want to try it today, what do you got to lose for 20 bucks to see if you don't see a difference in three weeks or less yourself when you go to relieffactor.com. Again, get the three-week quick start today at relieffactor.com. Once again, that's relieffactor.com. Before we get to Ask Me Anything, Todd, 40 years ago today, The final episode of V, The Final Battle aired on network TV, on NBC. And when when you think of some of the greatest moments in TV history during the 80s, of course, Who Shot JR is number one. I mean, that even penetrated the presidential election at the time. The candidates were talking about it, all right? Who Shot JR is number one. But somewhere on that list would be either... The scene in V, the original, when it's still kind of ambiguous whether these visitors are altruistic or not, and you see Diana, their smoke smoke show leader, eat that mouse. Do you remember that? I do. It's it's and what what the playground at recess and stuff was like at school the next day. Everybody just talked about that. Or in V, the final battle when the when the alien baby is born. One of those two. Okay. How many episodes was that? The first, I want to say the first part was two or three, and the second part, I think, was three, I think. And you know, we watched it years ago when the kids were little for a family movie night. We watched the whole thing over a couple of weeks, and uh, the story, man, is still really good. I mean, if anything, it's better than a lot of the stories we're told today. I mean, the production value is... Let's just say it's closer to Land of the Lost than what you get, what you want when we were, you know, from the Sid and Marty Croft than what we, uh, what we uh, see today, you know, but the story, even the kids were like, this is really good. Yeah. So 40 years ago, we were Probably. another reminder. We were a great country once. Todd. Probably should have parked it right there. That was our high point right there. It may have been. Tigers on their way to winning the World Series. We were a great country once. All right, let's get to it. It's your turn to ask me anything. No topic is off limits. It just has to get by the gatekeeper here, Todd. He selects the questions. He curates the questions. I have seen none of them until Aaron, you unveil them one by one. We'll get through as many of these as we can. All right, let's begin with Joe Robin at Blind. How would the nation be different if the original or uh, 13th Amendment or they removed the 13th Amendment of the Titles of Nobility Act were enforced? That prohibits any government employee from receiving emoluments from any power foreign to the government, and it would prohibit lobbyists and corporate campaign contributions. Uh, Can the Titles of Nobility Act be ratified by the several states today? Would that be quicker than an Article 5 convention? I've not heard this suggestion before. This is interesting. Hmm. It's a little bit like unintentionally, and and I'm not... Who was that 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 sent that? Or get his name right? Joe Robin at Blind. So, Joe, I, I am not drawing a parallel here between you and Mr. Bernstein and Aaron's montage. But your post gave me the same reaction that Mr. Bernstein's did unintentionally in his case. He wasn't trying to provoke my synapses. In fact, he was depressing them. But the part where he unintentionally stumbles into... If we can print money, why are we borrowing money? Well, that's the question that I didn't play in that clip. The woman in the documentary says, why are we borrowing money that we print, basically? Yeah. Just, let's, why, why screw ourselves twice? You know what I'm saying? At least if if we can only, we only have to screw ourselves once, just do it one time. (laughs) By the way, Nancy Pelosi wants all of us dead for even having this discussion. Correct. Um, and I, and as soon as I heard that question, I'm like, why hadn't I thought of that question before? And I thought I had the same reaction as Aaron was reading your note, Joe. That is a very intriguing proposition. Now, here's the thing. And, and this is, as uh, forgive me, I am processing here in real time. All right. The difference with this in an Article 5 convention 
is I think a case could be made that we may not get what you want without an Article 5 convention. I mean, how many members of Congress in either party? Did you guys see what Hakeem Jeffries said this morning, by the way? Yeah, that'll be in the montage tomorrow. Okay, so I mean, you should say I, it. Yeah, I, mean, I, I won't spoil it then. I don't want to spoil it. If it's in the montage tomorrow, I won't spoil it. All right. Let's just say Hakeem Jeffries just confirmed everything I've been saying for the last several months. All right. Anyway, how many members of Congress are going to voluntarily sign up to say, take our grift? You know what I mean? Um, that's more than a physician heal thyself moment. I mean, Albert Borla, who created the cancer causing agent and now has his new uh, batch of oncology drugs he's anxious to roll out. He called even and said, I can't even see that happening. All right. I just, I cannot see a critical mass of, of members of Congress who would sign up for this. Um, Whereas an Article 5 convention, if I'm reading your note right, am I missing something? Because I'm processing this in real time. I don't think so. Okay. Um, largely puts this at a state level um, where we've got more of an opportunity. Where the, the grift still exists, but it's not nearly as, in many places, as penetrating as it, what we're talking about in Washington, D.C. But this is a... That is interesting. I like it. I, at the very least, you may have come up with something that, you know, I, whenever the we do the some variation over the years of the question of if you can enact one piece of legislation, what is it? And I've always said over the years, many times, uh, I'd get rid of all paycheck withholding. I'd, I'd make people write that check themselves to see how much of what they earn is truly being taken from them, right? You may have come up with something that rivals that answer. I mean, I that's pretty. that's a pretty smart take. That's good stuff. Next. He was all over the place. I mean, he's going to be here with question number two and a few uh, questions. You let a guy ask this, a question twice? Uh, See, yeah. I actually didn't put, create a graphic for that. Okay. Because I just thought that that got by Todd, but apparently nope, it did not. Did not that was ahead. part of the plan. I mean, it's nope, very, hey, it, it, it is rare for us to let someone ask two questions. So that so well, I will say the, 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 the value of this first one he's earned it because the first one is he, very good. He seems to be an edge lord on MeWe, but you know, not many people uh, came and brought it. So uh, we're going to give him, they were two good questions. All right, go ahead, Aaron. We'll go to Tom first though. Uh, Tom Cornell asks, will the, where will the larger, mostly peaceful protest take place? Milwaukee, Wisconsin in July or Chicago, Illinois in August? And will it be the black swan event that takes one presumptive nominee or both of them? Love these questions. That's that's a good question, too. I, I would say you're likely to see whatever happens in Chicago branded as mostly peaceful. <laughs> and, and we have a history, by the way, of Democrat conventions in Chicago and what happens when they, uh, even at the nascent stages of this movement, courted these radicals uh, and uh, played footsie with them. So there's already a history of this with Chicago Democratic conventions, but r whatever happens there this summer, rest assured, you will be confidently assured that it is a mostly peaceful protest, correct? Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, we, we could see spleens opened, wombs opened, uh, capillaries uh, tapped, okay? Whatever it is. I mean, it, it could be blood is red on the road. If it's if whatever happens in Chicago, you will be told it is a mostly peaceful protest. I think the Black Swan event is more likely to happen in Wisconsin, uh, because meeting there will be the party that has done nothing of any substance at all to stop any of the reasons that you should want to vote for them this year. Not, I mean, literally nothing, less than nothing. On a national level, less than nothing. I mean, it's funded everything. So the, the true notion of a black swan would be if something terrible were to happen there by virtue of their own... What the Democrats are doing is intentional. The Democrats are intentionally doing this to the country. That's why it's demonic. This is, they're on mission. What the Republicans are doing is what would create the black swan. Um... Gee, how did we not know that funding every demonic scheme attacking the country would eventually 
not cost us something, right? I mean, that, that's, a, that's a black swan event. So I think, I think the black swan is more likely to be in Milwaukee. And whatever happens in Chicago, you will be reliably assured by America's uh, trustworthy media that it is indeed mostly peaceful. Next, we go to uh, Ben Poland. Do you think there's any indication that the Southern Baptist Convention will fight back the spiritual powers of darkness that have infiltrated its ranks in recent years? Or do you think it's looking like the ecclesiastical body will go the way of the Protestant main lines? I think the latter cannot happen. And the reason why is I think that it is, um, well, hold on. Let's define what happened to the Protestant main lines. And maybe what I'm going to suggest, you might include in a definition. I don't know. But holistically, I do not believe the Southern Baptist Convention could go the way of the Episcopalian Church. Because there's too much pent-up biblicism within the denomination. What I, what I could foresee is a schism. I, I could see that. Uh, I, I could see a, a, a breaking away, a, divi- a schism within the convention. If the, if the forces of the spirit of the age there are too entrenched, and I would include cowardice and syncretism in compliance or acquiescence to the spirit of the age, I would include that in that assumption. If those forces are too entrenched, I could see there being a schism. But if you go back to um, my day group prediction last Friday, there's a reason why I predicted that in, in a very short amount of time, the vast majority of, of spirit-filled Protestants in America will define themselves as either uh, charismatic or reformed. Because if you look at a lot, not, all, not exclusively, but a lot of the people that are leading the charge and the pushback against what's happening in the Southern Baptist Convention are reformed Baptists. I, I think that's Williams Group, is it not, Aaron? that we had on the show last week. Yeah. Cuz D- Devers is a part of that group and that's what that's those guys mm-hmm. are all reformed Baptists. Who, who by the way, uh if you want to know a, a great example of a reformed Baptist, well, uh whose work have I been using to accompany my discussions as part of our uh series on Romans? Spurgeon? Charles Spurgeon. He was a reformed Baptist. Okay? So I I they're the ones they're 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 by and large not exclusively but by and large they are leading the pushback um people with some inclination of reformed theology are leading the pushback against the soft-headedness in the southern baptist convention and and also more and more you know if, if you work in evangelical politics you you're seeing charismatics now like you would have seen southern baptists in the 90s or 2000s so I, I, that's why I, that's why I made that prediction, and so I I could see that happening, I I could see a schism happening, um, where you you're just not going to be able to detach the the syncretistic heretical clause uh, on the actual apparatus of the Southern Baptist Convention. I mean, the the new guy at this the new guy at their Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission was promoting this anti-Semitism law last week. Guys, I'm just telling you right now, okay? Let me, let me clarify all my views on this as a lead-up to what I'm about to say. I am an ardent Zionist. I absolutely believe in the Jewish claim on the land. I believe no other peoples have a claim on the land. I don't believe there's any such thing as a Palestinian. It's a made-up distinction. They don't exist. Because they're, they're, it's a made-up culture, made-up country, made-up people in terms of designation not made up in terms of their value and inherent worth made in the likeness and image of god but the culture that that is ascribed to them does not exist and i said on i came out here i've been saying since october the 8th i am okay with operation zero hour after what happened on october the 7th i think it's totally justified I think the two-state solution sounds like the final solution to me. How many times have I said all these things recently enough. and, and well, over the years? Enough and okay. not, clearly not enough. Okay. Prophetically, 
I have mixed views on the nation of Israel. I because I've studied both sides and I know what both sides think. Okay. Um, I can on one hand I can look at the nation of Israel in its current form and see it as even more secular and more left wing and and more beholden to the spirit of the age and, and and the rainbow jihad than even our Western culture is, and say I don't that doesn't look like a prophetic reconfiguration of Israel to me. On the other hand, I can look at the way the devil tends to react to this current iteration of Israel and come to the conclusion he seems to think that it is <laughs> fair. Okay, I have very mixed views on that. I'm much more ardent in my Zionism than I am in my prophetic confidence in Israel. So do not assume that my uh, strong pro-Israel views are rooted in my eschatology when I don't actually have one. Okay, I don't have an eschatology. I have questions and concerns about every eschatology. So it has nothing to do with an eschatological dogma at all. Not to mention during COVID, I was extremely critical of Benjamin Netanyahu on this show during what was the wor- maybe the worst lockdown in America, correct? Yes. And then they finally had a religiously observant Jew, his successor, Naftali Bennett, took over, and I was extremely critical of him for turning the Israeli people over to be pharmaceutical experiments on behalf of Pfizer. Am I, if I misstated my record or views on this nope. in the past. So I say all that to say this it is an absolutely dumb as hell literal like hell dumb as literal hell idea to give biden administration non-government organizations the power to define what is or isn't anti-semitism it's dumb i don't care what your guidelines are i don't care how the thing is worded granting that kind of power to a biden ngo because let me tell you what they're going to do they are, they are, they're going to consult groups like the Southern Poverty Law Center and the Anti-Defamation League. The Anti-Defamation League tried to, before we knew what a cancel culture was 20 years ago, tried to cancel Mel Gibson's The Passion because it was a faithful retelling of the events in the Gospel of Matthew. By the way, Matthew's real name, Levi, Jewish. First book of the New Testament written by a Jew. The first thing you read in the New Testament is a, is a genealogy of Jews written by a Jew. And the Anti-Defamation League tried to get that movie canceled. That was 20 years ago. Anti-Defamation League become less of a simp for the spirit of the age in the last 20 years, gentlemen? No. No. So who do you think they're going to call? Do you think do you think the Biden NGO is going to call Daniel Horowitz to find out is this anti-Semitic? Do you think they're going to assemble a council of Daniel Horowitz, Josh Hammer? Do you think, think, think those guys are going to be on their council of hey hey consult us on what is and isn't anti-Semitic? Think they're going to do that? Hell to the no, they're not. They're going to call the Southern Poverty Law Center. They're going to call the Anti-Defamation League who thinks the passion was anti-Semitic. So yeah, it's a terrible idea. It's a terrible idea. Which is why I'm not surprised to see Ralph Reed promoting it. Not in the least. I forgot what the freaking question was. What is it? I'm sorry. (laughs) Uh, is the SBC going to go the way of the Protestant oh, mainline denominations? Okay. So what? What basically? What? What? What's become of dispensationalism now in the political ranks is, and this is another reason why you're going to see more and more people flocking to reform theology, even if they don't know what it means, even if they don't understand it, even if they couldn't define it, 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 it just looking for a new home after seeing what's. So the new dispensational position is. We can literally sink our own country, but provided we cut Israel uh, a check for the latest weapon systems, uh, we'll be blessed by God. No, we won't. Maybe what we should do next is, you know what? Somebody slaps his, slaps their wife around, breaks her nose, should just walk into court. Yeah. Hey, I, 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 I donated to, the, uh, to some Jewish charities. And I'm wearing the star of David, so I'm good, right? My sins, I'm, I'm forgiven. My, I'm not held accountable. I, I've, I've acknowledged the greatness of the nation of Israel, and I've absolved. That's that how it works. It's stupidity. It's beyond stupidity to grant this kind of power to a Biden NGO. Period. End of sentence. And I can't believe I have to say this, but I do. And that's one of the reasons why you're seeing people flock to reform theology.
The reason why you're seeing people flock to charismaticism is because the idea of a faith that isn't just something in books, but a, but a God that still reigns, that's still powerful. He's not a theory. He's not a philosophy. He's sharp. He's active. He's engaged. He's still reigning. He's not waiting. That attracts people. And that's why I think you'll see those two groups dominate whatever is the future of a Protestant religion in America. And I think the reform camp will either save the Southern Baptist Convention or it will end up splitting because it just isn't, it's insalvageable. Next up. I think I answered like seven questions there. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was okay. well done. Okay. Uh, Joe Robin at Blind Redux. Uh, after Jethro explained that the people must be taught ordinances and laws, including the Ten Commandments, that men of truth must be provided for governing, and that the structure, rulers of 10, 50, 100, and 1,000, for governing between men, then testifies, and God commanded thee so in Exodus 18, 16 through 23, as this once great nation was established upon the laws of nature's God and the pattern of Israel and supported by the hand of divine providence. This question is way too long. Yeah, which t testifies to the rectitude of our intentions before the Supreme Judge. Are you absolutely certain that we are a nation of will and not a nation that must answer for violating the eternal laws of nature's creator? I have no idea what that means. I can't answer the question. I don't understand it. So It's here, a really I'm not good question. It I'm is. not trying to put, by all means explain it to me because I didn't get it. I'm not trying to pull your pants down. Would would you rather that it just been? Are you certain that we are not a nation of will, or that we are a nation of will and not a nation that must answer for violating the eternal laws of nature's creator? Would you know what that means? Yeah, I I don't. What I don't understand is why he views those things as in conflict. That's why I don't understand his question. So let me clarify what I mean by that. It's not that I don't understand the words that he is saying. I don't understand the narrative that he is crafting. He, his, his, the narrative of his question indicates that those things are in conflict. Well, that's I, why I don't, it's a I don't, discussion. I don't, I don't, how would they possibly be in conflict? That's what I'm asking. I don't understand. How would they be in conflict? What, to me, they're cause and effect. They're not in conflict at all. They're in symbiosis. It's a distinction that isn't a difference. It, unless I'm missing something. That's well, because we talk about it all the time on the show. I mean, you tell me. You picked Nation. the question. So you tell, when you picked well, we the did. question, you were thinking what? Well, you say all the time. We are a nation of... Uh, we're not a nation of laws yeah. and never have been. We're a nation of political will and always will be. Correct. Right. Yeah. And this is why I didn't think it was too long of a question. I thought he was being fair and providing biblical precedent. Again, if this is here, show me what I'm missing and if what is where if what is question. where that's what i don't get if what is where that's the i'm not i'm not trying to be obtuse i truly don't understand why he views his these two things in conflict because we say that all the time we say, what your, your slogan right and so he is he trying to say he thinks that's not right he's he's saying it seems to be there's biblical precedent that that may not be right. And his biblical precedent he, would be, it, again, I don't understand is this. Is he saying that we are past the point of being a nation of political will, a nation of, I think that's what he's trying to channel, is not a nation of laws, a nation of political will. Is he trying to say that we're past that point and now we're just in the end game of having to answer to God for what that will brought us? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I, I don't know. I don't, I mean... He seems to be taking what we're saying very seriously and then asking, okay, let's let's play this out beyond just words into can this can it bear fruit? Will it bear fruit? I again I thought it was an interesting thought experiment. I don't have I didn't and he didn't seem to be calling into question what we're saying. Is it but it, it does seem to be begging the question if it's Aaron, Aaron, put it back up there for a second if you could please. If let it's me, viable. Let me look at it again. Okay. And God commanded thee, as this once great nation was established upon the laws of nature's God, the pattern of Israel, and supported by the hand of divine providence, which testifies to the rectitude of our intentions before the supreme, God, supreme judge. Are we absolutely certain that we are a nation of will? So is he saying then that, After that, we've, that we're under judgment so nothing we do will matter? Is that, that what he is trying to say? Th that's the, the ballpark I okay. think we're in. Okay. If, if, After if, breaking all the laws, willfully, wantonly, destructively, licentiously, is there what what will is there left? Okay, 
All right, if it, let's just assume that's what he's saying because that's our best chance to have a productive conversation. Because if it's anything else, I don't understand what he's saying. So let so it doesn't. Even if we are, it doesn't matter. Because even if we are, are the laws of nature and is it? Hey, we're under judgment, so let's just do whatever we want. Are we? Are we ever permitted to do that? No, no. So even if it's true that there's nothing we could do. And, and by the way, if it's true that there's nothing we could do, is God unjust? No. No. I mean, are we murdering our offspring? Uh, have we defiled his marriage covenant? Um, have we institutionalized covetousness as a government policy? I mean, how many more commandments can we, can we you know, possibly violate? I mean, um, I mean, except for like all of them in our current iteration as a culture, right? Mm-hmm. So if, if indeed it's too late... Let's make sure we clarify this up front. If indeed it is too late, is, is, has God not been patient? Is God unjust? Is, 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 is this unfair to some extent if it's too late? I would argue no. In fact, if anything, God's been merciful and waiting it out for as long as he did. So, so let's assume that it is too late. We wouldn't know. Number two, it wouldn't matter. Because I still have to live the way God calls me to live anyway. When, when God's people are under captivity in the Old Testament, he doesn't suspend the law. He doesn't tell, hey, stop, stop you, know, uh, you, you know, stop what you're doing. And, you know, ex- he tells them it's the opposite, actually. Keep getting married. Keep, keep the commandment to multiply. Um, uh, you know, keep working your fields. You know, uh, to my glory. So for the believer, nothing changes nothing so if it's too late then god has blessed us with his revelation to to live an enlightened light life according to the light of his word and receive the blessings of them in the midst of a judgment and so god is good right yes and if it's not too late then then god has granted us more mercy than we deserve and there is still an opportunity through our own small our reformation to indicate that that we want to repent for what we've done to get us to this place. Mm -hmm. So God is good either way, right? So really, the the people that should be wrestling with this, by the way, are the unelect. It is the unbeliever who should be wrestling with whether it is too late or not, not the believer. Nothing changes for the believer whether it's too late or not. Well, politically it might. Listen, I thought this was good because this called into my... Does citizenry fundamentally matter if, if we are truly under judgment? Sure it does. Why? Because, I mean, Paul is in a, in, a, in a purely pagan demonic culture. He still utilizes his citizenry to God's glory. So can we. We can still use our citizenry to God's glory. I, but we're talk, if you're, you're talking about a people under judgment. All right, we're up against That's a different. break. Yeah, here's what I would like you to do, if you don't mind, Todd. Come up with a very specific follow-up question to this one i just did okay that's it all right and and then i'll answer paul wasn't a people under judgment we if we are that's the difference okay we'll do that here when we come back Man, it feels like everything these days is so expensive. Food, gas, rent. I know a lot of people used to feel the same way about hearing aids. That's because they haven't heard about our sponsor, MD Hearing, before. If you're still paying thousands of dollars for hearing aids that may not even work right, uh, try out MD Hearing. Uh, It's an FDA-registered rechargeable hearing aid that costs a fraction of what typical hearing aids cost. MD Hearing's uh, NEO model It costs over 90% less than clinical hearing aids. That's incredible. And the Neo actually fits inside your ear, so no one will even know it's in there. MD Hearing was founded by an ENT surgeon who saw how many of his patients needed hearing aids but couldn't afford them. So he wanted to do something about it, and he made it his mission to develop a quality hearing aid that anyone could afford. That's what MD Hearing is all about. 
the fulfillment of that mission. Get the hearing you deserve with MD Hearing. Go to shopmdhearing.com. Use the promo code Steve to get their new $297 when you buy a pair offer. Plus, they're adding a free extra charging case. That's a $100 value right there just for listeners of our show. That's mdhearing.com. Use promo code Steve to get their new $297 when you buy a pair offer. You can't beat it. 90% off and in many cases better than what you're going to get in a clinic. All right. mdhearing.com. Promo code Steve. mdhearing.com. Promo code Steve. All right. Let's go back and close the loop on this question before we left the break. So Todd. What's the what's the follow up question to his question that you think we should wrestle with? If we are truly under judgment, does political will apply like you think it does versus a nation that's not under judgment, maybe screwed up? I mean, what I get this is begging the question, what judgment really is? And then what are we called to do in the face of it? Now, that's pretty heavy and that's pretty loaded, which is why I thought him spending a little time getting into it uh, was fair. Okay. I I mean, this is a million dollar question. I agree. The way you phrased it is a million dollar question. And let me say this. um, If we're at a point that political will is no longer a consideration then we're not a nation um, because there's there's no there's no platform by which as a citizen you could do anything righteous that we are completely either um, forsaken to history and in, in a, uh, you know we're we're the Christians in Cappadocia in catacombs okay and we're not there yet but can can it, can I, it, can I it, think so, about every day about whether we are or not. Well, we're still on a, I don't, I'm trying to think of how not to be flippant and I answer this, but we still get paid pretty well to do this. So we're not in a catacomb. Yeah. You know, could well, be, it's a catacomb of our own making. The well, comfort is the catacomb. This well, is my point. That's to, to me, that's, that's a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's not a divine judgment. That's the laws of sowing and reaping. That's, we decided we preferred comfort. So we have been given our reward in full. That's another form of judgment, though. I agree. But that is that to me is is the natural law that is self-enforcing. We we sowed those seeds and, and we will reap them now. And so uh, it, it's our, what our buddy Scott Atlas, which you're tapping into, I think, is what Scott Atlas uh, posted over the weekend, uh, that the missing virtue in the country is courage and COVID proved that. And he's correct. The people are the problem. OK, but if the people are the problem in that case, that would also mean they're therefore they're the solution. I mean, we, we can acquire courage, the, the ability to instill courage, the ability to inspire courage is still there, uh, both from Providence and amongst ourselves. And in a, a, I do think it is worth exploring what's the ratio of citizenship to, say, uh, discipleship. And I think that's worth exploring, by the way. Not on the basis of whether you think we're a culture under judgment or not. I don't think there's any question we're a culture under some form of judgment. I, I think the the question is it a is it a sowing and reaping judgment like we, you and I were just discussing a minute ago? Is it a Romans one judgment? Is a divine judgment so that there's nothing we could do to alter it? I don't know the answer to that, but we're here because we we didn't take discipleship seriously for the last couple of generations. And so anytime you think your culture is under some form of judgment, the answer is, is you're out of whack in your ratio. So like I, I mentioned to you a minute ago uh, that Paul uses his citizenship, even in a demonic culture where Nero is Caesar, okay, marrying his male slave in the Senate and lighting Christians on fire to, 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 to uh, illuminate his orgies at night. He's even still using his citizenship there, right? But what's the ratio of time Paul spends from activating his citizenship to working on discipleship? And his citizenship is only activated in and in, in or to the to the degree of which it would enhance right. his ability to disciple. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that we're way out of whack where that's concerned. I, I think the the idea that a better Republican Party, we're, we're way beyond all that right now way beyond all of that 
way beyond. Um, and and what, what what is needed more than anything is biblical discipleship. That ratio is upside down. Okay. Um, I I saw something on Twitter today of of people praying over a giant statue that of the Bible with the American flag on it. The founders would have never done something like that. They would have instead told you there's no American flag without the Bible, that they're not conjoined twins. That that one is the is the result of the other. And and the other, the word, is on its own level. Nothing shares with that. And so if our if our answer to the idolatry of the spirit of the age, which is, you know, their narcissism, their Marxism, all these various idolatrous worldviews they've adopted uh, that are demonic and satanic in origin. If our answer, if our response to that is just to come up with our own craven syncretistic versions of that, don't take part in any of that. Even while they'll tell you, well, if you don't do that, then you're helping the blah, 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 blah. That none of that matters. Okay, let me put it in a different context. If, if someone, um, if your buddy was cheating on his wife and he tried to tell you, um, if you don't cheat on your wife too, you know, uh, then you're, then you're, you're not loyal to our fellowship. Would that be a good reason to cheat on your wife? No, it would not. Your buddy, in fact, has broken your fellowship by his actions and then acting you to take part in them. And we are, if we're not there yet, we are very close to a to an era without a course correction where it will be unrighteous to take part in this system. That, 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 that on an activist level, on a voting level, doesn't mean I still don't use my citizenship. We don't have any record of how Paul voted for Roman senators. Do we know how? Do we know? We don't have a clue. The only voting that takes place in the New Testament among the populace, Barabbas gets picked. Okay. So, you know, but if if the election is between two people who openly think you can kill your kid whenever you want and you can marry whatever you want and we can mutilate kids and there's no such thing as gender. What's the, do you know what the point of that is? Well, I, like I said, I wonder at every and we're getting, and, and, and without a course correction, we are going to see those moments. And, and this has happened before. This is where you, when you see the abomination of desolation, you flee, right? And the church has traditionally done this because that's what the Lord told them to do. We, we, we don't, we're not here to pour new wine into old wineskins. When the thing, when things get so bad, this, ironically, this is a country founded by people who thought things were so bad in their own country, they left it to come here and start all over again. Okay, so this idea that we just keep taking part in a system that has become an, an irredeemably corrupt, that's not true either. That's a false choice. You know, some of you think we're at that point now. I get it. I don't necessarily think that, but have I, am I here to argue with, have I argued one time with anybody who does? No. Ironically, the favor's not returned my way, I've noticed. You guys keep, want to keep arguing with me. I've noticed that, even though I'm not arguing with you. But you do you. But I will tell you, we are approaching a moment here as a people, without a course correction, that your vote is just largely not even, forget they won't count it. It's morally irrelevant. We're really close to that. And that's another reason why I did what I did during this last primary, as I thought it was a chance, you know, to try to thwart that, head that off before we got to that point. But millions more people had different ideas. Have I, has I, have I now, do you think, tackled the question enough, or is there another angle to it you think we ought to discuss? Well, I think you're, you're far closer to being symbiotic with it. And I, again, I thought it was based on your reaction last week to the upcoming election. Okay. Just, I mean, I just thought there was a lot of connectivity to that statement. Okay.
All right, before we finish up, let me tell you about our friends over at Patriot Mobile. For a decade now, they have been America's only American wireless phone provider. They have been on the vanguard of the necessary, I should say, uh, parallel economy that we don't quite have. But thankfully, we fully do in one place, and it's with our mobile phones. One product we all need to survive and thrive in modern America these days. Make the switch now to Patriot Mobile. You won't regret it. They've got an outstanding customer service team. And when you make the switch, let them know that you're a veteran or first responder if you are, and they've got extra ways to say thank you if you do that. All of us with my name, Steve, can get a free activation with the offer code Steve today when you go to patriotmobile.com slash Steve. They'll customize your switch any way you, you need, whether you want to keep your phone, upgrade your phone, change numbers, uh, make it harder for the Republican Party to, sna- to, to spam you with robotechs that are very annoying and shame-based, or you want to keep your number because you really love those and you want to get more. Whatever you prefer. YOLO. All right, just go to patriotmobile.com slash Steve. Make the switch today. Free activation with the offer code Steve. Patriotmobile.com slash Steve. Again, that's patriotmobile.com slash Steve. You want to do another one real quick? Yeah, we have time. Oh, yeah, we do, don't we? Uh, let's see. Wraith Rogue Star says, uh, many people just celebrated Star Wars Day on May 4th. May the 4th be with you. However, some fans recognize Star Wars Day on its actual 1977 release date, which is May 25th. Where do you stand on this important issue facing our nation? Wraith says, hi, Todd. <laughs> what a great troll. I liked it. I, I don't care. You know, you keep Star Wars Day in your day in your way, and I'll keep it in mine. I'd rather have you celebrating Star Wars Day than Kwanzaa. I know that. So, but I'm okay with whatever. By the way, Star Wars originally opened in like 100 theaters. If you can believe that. It opened in May tw- on May 25th in like 100 theaters. 100 and something. It's crazy. Go ahead. Paul Lyman or Lehman says, once it's smoked, is it for the Levites only? Or can we send everyone home with a choice cut and a flagon of wine? So well, it's for the, the Levites has, only. The veil's been torn. So there's nothing for the Levites only anymore. The veil has been torn. Why didn't I bring you any of my brisket this weekend then? Well, just because you are, are a covetous son of a gun and selfish. No, it's because it's for the Levites only. <laughs> Nothing's for the Levites only anymore. The veil has been Is torn. Is that in the small print of the plaque over your shoulder? It's for the Levites only? Is that what this 100% score brings? I haven't checked, but that's a good idea. And as a good Protestant, Aaron, you should believe in the priesthood of every believer. Nothing's yeah. for the Levites only anymore. Yeah, the smoked meat is for the Levites only. Levites only. Matt Johnson says, what's the biggest white pill you see in this current age? Or you can see, I guess that's important. You can see in this current age. White pill you can this see This is in the this counter-programming age. of the other question that we just went into and we lamented at length. You know what? Uh, there's actually a, quite a few. Let me give you one I saw this past weekend. Our good friend Ryan Walters, the superintendent of schools in Oklahoma... I mean, he put forth a thread of how they are just defying the spirit of the age on every front in Oklahoma schools. And that's an example of a dude who proves every point we try to make all the time. It's just a question of willingness. It's just a question of courage. And he proves that. I mean, the amount of heat he's up against, the, uh, from his, first of all, it's Oklahoma. So no one cares what the Democrats think. When, so when I say heat he's up against, I'm not talking about lefties. It's Oklahoma. No one cares what they think. It's from his own party. It's from people on his own team. But the reason why that is a white pill to me is because it demonstrates this doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be like this. Even, even in our current state, look at what one guy in Oklahoma is capable of doing. Look at, look at what Chris Rufo is quite capable of doing. Look at what Ron DeSantis has been capable of doing. Now, there's a key word in all three of those examples I cited. Do you guys know what the key word was? Come on, Todd, you're a good Catholic. What was the key word that I cited there in all three of those examples? Doing. 
doing. Not pontificating, not pondering, not wondering, not wishing, doing. Doing. Maybe you can't be the superintendent of Oklahoma schools. Maybe you can't be a governor. Can you be a better husband? Can you can you be a good father? Can you be a good grandparent? Can you be a, a good discerning citizen uh, when it comes to acquiring knowledge and information of what is true and what is not? I would imagine anybody of sound mind and body could do those things, mm-hmm. right? There's, there is something every single one of us can do. Every single one of us. There is something we can do. Not say, not write, not think, not wish, not pray, do. There is something we could all do. For some of us, it will be superintendent of the schools of one of the 50 states. It'll be governor of a state. Maybe it'll be president of all the states. Or maybe it will be just improving the state of my own home. But there is something we can all actually do. That's a good question to end it on. Gentlemen, you have any final thoughts here in the last 30 seconds? Well, uh, it's a good. It's, that's a especially good antidote considering where we started on the show today uh, with Aaron's montage talking about uh, how much we enjoy apparently getting gaslit because what else is the reason for over and over again not learning lessons from? It's not a secret anymore. We know that this is the function of the media and all politicians. Yet there was no red wave, and last January still happened. So why aren't we doing? Well, we're going to do an overtime when we come back for subscribers later today at blazetv.com slash days. For the rest of you, we'll be back later, like tomorrow, noon to 2 Eastern, right after Glenn Beck, right here on Blaze TV. Until then, Romans 828.